Matai and his son, called Law Palayim, Law Yahweh Bashmi Aushad Bashma Vakar Kadash, Yahweh Bashmi Aushad Brakatham, to the believers, to those that preach this word, instant in season and out of season, and no diligence, and I'm shalom to those that are learning and listening and growing thereby as well. Um, it's the brother Mark Vakam coming at you with another video, and I want to respond to this news article here from the BBC. And uh, as it reads, it says, COVID packed pilot festival brings the good times back for one night. <clears throat> so I'm going to call this video, the good times are back, but for how long? So anyway, let's read this. It says, the pilot concert in Liverpool on Sunday saw the largest number of people to have legally crammed into such a small space in the UK since the start of the pandemic. They had a euphoric night, but a loss is riding on its success. It's a sight that it, it has existed only in fund, fading memory for the past 13 months, and has sometimes seemed destined to be consigned, excuse me, to be consigned to the carefree pre-COVID age. 5,000 closely packed music fans dancing and jumping and uh, singing in unison at the top of their lungs. No masks, no social distancing, no rules of six, no risk of fines. Just having a good time with your with your mates. Drinking beer from cardboard pint pots and queuing up for uh, Portaloos getting rained on and listening to live music and a me melee of strangers who are hearing and seeing and feeling the same thing as you. Just like old times and hopefully like times still to come. And um, being that uh, they've, they've lifted the restrictions, people are going all the way back to serving Bacchus Dionysus again. <laughs> what do I mean by that? I'll show you what I mean. Bacchus is a, is a uh, one of the one of out of many gods from the ancient Roman Empire, which represented liberation and anything that had to do with pretty much wine. Having a you know a cheerful um, time, so it says. Um, <laughs> Bacchus the Liberator, the simplest way to comprehend Bacchus, also known as Dionysus and Liber, is to understand him to be the god of the vine and of wine, and all that associates with wine. Ancient Romans shared many of our <clears throat> contemporaries' associations with wine, such as cheerfulness lusciousness and nighttime partying so that's really what uh Bacchus represents which is a Roman god as I've just read which means a god of cheerfulness and that's what people are getting back into um, serving that particular god okay which ain't nothing but a myth anyway <laughs> but uh in the age that we're living in you know, we're living in a time where great troubles will pursue this earth and people have um, taken their eye off the ball, so to speak, through getting back to what they were doing before, which is partying, which is what only but the thing that people live for, man. It's just partying and bullshitting, you know? So anyway, it says... Um, it says, uh, Sunday's mini festival in Liverpool, Sefton Park, was one of government's official trials events to research how large gatherings can safely take place again. All ticket holders had to take a supervised uh, lateral flow test at one of four testing centers in the city of the days before and were only allowed if the tests were negative. So, yeah, that's just, I, thought, I mean, I read what I had to read on this, so I'm going to just move to the scriptures now. So anyway, let's get this. This is um, <clears throat> Ecclesiastes 7, verse 2. It says, It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and living will lay it to heart. In other words, the, the living is representing um, the ones of us that have awakened. And because we're awakened, we're not going to go in the house of feasting, because we know that what sudden destruction come upon us. All right. And we don't know what time is going to come. This is why it says in the, in the book of first Thessalonians five, verse three, it says for when they shall say peace 
and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So that's our mindset. Our mindset is we're expecting destruction to come, and we can't get caught slipping. All right? You know, we have to remain vigilant and circumspect. But these people out here, they don't have anything to look forward to or to expect concerning prophecies. People are just doing the average things that they that they was doing before. You know, watching TV programs that ain't really teach you a damn thing. And uh, going to work. And then on the weekends, go on concerts, party, go to parks and, you know, talk shit and bullshit. <laughs> that kind of sort of lifestyle that people get into, man, which is what? Them getting in the spirit of Bacchus, Dionysus. Let's move forward. Let's, uh, let's get the book of Galatians 6 verse 8. You know what? Let me read First Thessalonians 5 and 3 once again because I want to look up a word. It says, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come up upon them. Because right now, down here in the UK, they've, they've um, pulled back the restrictions. And this is why people are going back to the pubs and, you know, getting the point and just getting back to what they were getting back to, man. And, um, but not being aware that what's forth to come, which is the, 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 the time of Jacob's trouble, which will take place on this earth. And what I'm, what do I mean by that? <clears throat> and saying that there's going to come a time where society is going to hit ground zero, the economy is going to collapse, hyperinflation is going to occur, and um, martial law will be declared. So we're looking for that time to come, and then eventually the uh, the impending war, which is which is forth to come as well, World War Three. All right. So anything at this point can very well happen. So let's read this again. First Thessalonians 5 verse 3, it says, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Yeah, exactly. Because um, as I was saying before, people have um, gotten their eyes off the ball on how um, the government plans on doing A, B, and C to them. And... Um, so while they're partying, while people are taking their eye off the ball and partying, the powers that be have a sinister agenda for these people out here. And they're able to, you know, come together and conspire and come up with these legislations and, and, and bring forth new laws to, to affect people negatively, not for the better, but for the worse. All right. And that's what they need. They need people to get back out here because really, when you think about it, people being on the lockdown conditions, it was actually paving the way for people to wake up and to find out more information on how corrupt the system is that people are under. All right. So they need people to get right back to being distracted again and people for right for it, because uh, this is what people live for. Most people in the Western Hemisphere, they only live for joy. And um, just all around, like I was going into, man, serving the God of Bacchus, Dionysus. Getting involved in, um, you know, events that involve wine. And just living living cheerfully as much as they possibly can. In a time of great danger, which is suddenly only but forth to come. So now what we're going to do, we're going to look up this word, um, <coughs> destruction, from the word that, from the uh, the scripture. I was going to say the word I meant to say in the scripture of 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 where it says um, the word destruction so we're going to look up the word destruction in the Greek and the word is Strong's G, 3639, Alephras, Alephras. Alephras, which means ruin, destroy, death for the, for the destruction of the flesh, 
set of the external ills and troubles by which the lust of the flesh are subdued and destroyed. Yeah, just like it says in the book of Galatians, the sixth chapter, it says, For he that sowed to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sowed to the spirit shall the spirit of, excuse me, shall the spirit reap life everlasting. Yeah, because when you think about the flesh, the bodies that our spirits are in, decays. So if we serve the flesh, which decays, then we're going to lead ourselves to corruption or decaying. In other words, living in the world of sin. Okay? But as the spirit is, which is everlasting energy that, that's within your, your, your body, which cannot be um, disannulled, which cannot be put to death, if you reap to that, then you reap life everlasting because the spirit continues to live on. The spirit never dies. The lifestyle of serving backers is going to lead to death and destruction. Okay? So, yeah, that's all I have to say, you know, for this particular video here. Um, we're in a time where we have to be on the lookout and we have to be circumspect. As we are in a time of what? Mourning. And you know what? Um, speaking of that, let me read this because I, I didn't read this actually. I should have actually read this earlier. So anyway, it says a, a time for everything. A time for everything. There is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal and a time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep. And a time to laugh, and a time to mourn, and a time to dance. So we're in a time of what? Mourning. We're not in a time of dancing. Now, that time is going to come when the kingdom of heaven is set up. As it says in the book of um, the book of Isaiah 65, I believe it is. Where it talks about how the Lord is going to make Jerusalem a joyful city. And her and his people of rejoicing people. So that's going to be the time for us to rejoice. But right now as it stands. People are in the spirit of, of rejoicing now. In the time of mourning. Okay. And uh, more mournful times will come. Best believe that. So that's all I got to say. So with that. I say shalom.